Hey everybody, Matthew here from AnyWorkingMe.com, reporting from the basement of my home bunker. Uh, so if you hear noise, it's kids either playing piano or busy cleaning because it's a Saturday morning and we got to get our house cleaned. It's a full-time job. Anyways, the grand narrative that Games Workshop is putting on is uh, by the time this video goes up, I think the tickets are live. Um, it's Saturday, February something right now, and at 12.30 p.m. Eastern time, I believe, is when they go live. And I wanted to invite you to join me. And I don't just mean like, hey, come with me to the grand narrative. I want you to help me build a 300,000-point hive fleet force. That sounds like a lofty goal, but I got. I think we can, might be able to pull this off, and I'll tell you how. So first off, uh, I haven't read all the details of it, but if it's like last year, you're supposed to bring 3,000 points. And so that would be 100 people, would be 300,000. Also, I'm looking for Tyranid players and Gene Stealer Cult players, so that kind of widens our horizon. I did talk about this before, about having to match color schemes, but that's only going to be for a particular group. And so basically the way that the event works is it breaks it up into battle groups, so there, you're, there, you and nine other people are put together in a battle group, which you can actually request beforehand to be put in the same battle group of other people, and they will accommodate that. And so my dream is that we have 10 battle groups, so it'd be 100 people, 10 of them with me, so it'd be me and nine other people, if this works perfectly, would have the same color high fleet. It would be high fleet nihilist, so it would match my color scheme. And if you think, well, Matthew's just cheating, he doesn't want to have to paint, I'm going to paint... 3,000 points. So I'm right in there with you, and I will personally paint it. I will not hire any commission painters. It'll be 100% painted, assembled, and painted by Matthew from Any Wargaming. And, um, <clears throat> and we'll work together, all 10 of us, so that we represent one High Fleet Nihilus. And that means only one of us can bring a Swarm Lord, only one of us can bring Old One Eye, that kind of thing. And we'll try to kind of spread out so that when we set it up for the Army Showcase part of the whole thing, which there's like a bit of a competition there, that you see 30,000 points of the same High Fleet color scheme. Then I'm hoping to get 10 people who will do the same thing for Genes to their cults, and we'll come up with a color scheme that is the primary cult that worships High Fleet Nihilus. If you're not familiar with what High Fleet Nihilus is, it's my personal homebrewed high fleet. It's, it's on the, the west coast of the galaxy. Uh, it's it, it, it is a bit of mystery to uh, to it all, of course, because everybody loves to make mystery in their own in their own canon. But I'm planning on revealing more of it through narrative campaigns, possibly throughout the year before the grand narrative. Now, the other eighty people, there's it's optional whether or not you would paint the high fleet nihilist. Now, of course, I'd love for another ten people to do it, and we'd have sixty thousand points of all the same color scheme. But really, it's going to be hard enough to find, I think, nine other people who are willing to do that. But the other 80 can be a mixture of Tyranids and high, uh, and Genes that are called of whatever color schemes. And we can just say lore-wise that they are splinter fleets of high fleet Nihilus. And so technically we would make up one gigantic fleet, which would be a combination of the main fleet and all the splinter fleets. That allows people who already have collections of Tyranids who want to go to not have to be like, well, I don't want to have to put them in that color scheme. And that's fine, because I don't think I'd find 100 people. Now, if I could find 100 people who would or be willing to do that, well, that's awesome. And so if the more the merrier. I'm, I'm hoping for a minimum of 10 people total. And if I'm not able to do that, well, then we'll do like me and four other Tierna players and then five Genes that are called players, and we'll do a battle group. And we'll at least want to get that. But if we can get 100, I bet you we could get them to write this high fleet into the actual story. Because how could they refuse when there's 100 people? Last year, there was 300 people in the grand narrative. And they were divided into three teams. Can you imagine if we had one team that was just this singular high fleet? Wouldn't that be awesome? So details, I'll put a link to, uh, to, the, to the event for, for the grand narrative. Um, it's in November. I believe it's like November 22nd to 24th. Uh, it's in Atlanta, Georgia. It's at the same location as last time, which is, which is a nice big Atlanta hotel. And so it's, it's close to a major airport, the Atlanta, one of the biggest airports in the United States, the uh, Atlanta, Georgia airport. And so wherever you're coming from, that would be great. We're organizing us all in Discord, um, on the mini Wargaming Discord server in a private group. And so that's where we're going to do it. So if you want to do this with me, you need to email me at matthew at miniwargaming.com or 
you can contact me at Discord if you, it's MWG Matthew is my username, so feel free to private message me and then we'll work it all out. You don't have to commit to anything at this point. Um, if we just kind of start building the group, because I realize it's kind of far out, you got to plan flights, you got to take time off work, find babysitters if you've got kids, all that fun stuff. Um, but if you're just interested, then email me or message me on Discord for that. So like I said, there'll be more details in the event section below. And so I, I really hope that I can pull this off because I just think it would be so much fun. Because I remember going to the, la I've done two grand narratives. So they've done two grand narratives so far, and I've been at both of them. I brought my Tyrannus to both. But uh, I brought my new Tyranid High Fleet to the second one. And I, I remember kind of being in a rush and not preparing well for it and just kind of throwing the army together and going. And I had a lot of fun. But I just kind of regretted not putting more thought and time into it because uh, I could have been even more immersed in everything that was going on. And not because I'm, you know, try to get them to bend the story to what we're doing, but because I just noticed that we, we kind of formed a bond like most of my battle group was actually Tyranids, just I don't know if they did that on purpose or if it was just a coincidence. And so there was kind of a, a kinsmanship, a brother and sisterhood that was was formed um, between all of these people who were fighting together. And so I'd love for that to be more purposeful. Like maybe we'll do something fun like get t-shirts made so that we all have the same High Fleet Nihilist t-shirt or something like that. Uh, and and maybe we'll meet up at some point and have dinner together. All 100 of us. I don't know how we'll manage that. But at least the people in my battle group I want to be able to do that with. So maybe 100 people would be too crazy to... to... But I don't know. They, we, we can figure something out because we can chat in the Discord and we'll just kind of make it all up. And I'd also love to, like, organize really special things in some of these high fleets as well. Like, I've been thinking about doing some kit bashing and making some unique Tyranid organisms out of official parts because you can't use 3D printed stuff or third party stuff on your miniatures. Uh, except I, I think the rule is none whatsoever, but I don't know if it's like, it's okay if it's the thing here or there. Oh, I also, oh, that's, that reminds me. I'm sorry, this is just me at home on a Saturday. I just finished cleaning the kitchen. So I'm just like, I got to make this video because I saw the post that it's going to be going up today. And, um, I had the idea that we could actually create a really cool diorama for at least the, the, the 30,000 points that's all painted as High Fleet Nihilus, um, that I was actually thinking of hiring designers to create terrain that we then would 3D print. I don't know if we're allowed to bring 3D printed terrain, but maybe if we just don't ask. Just don't ask permission, right? I know for the models for sure, but the diorama is like, you got to be able to use whatever whatever you can, right? Maybe, maybe it doesn't have, just have to be, I don't know. I just... We'll figure it out. But at the very least, even if we have to use official Games Workshop stuff and we have to or handcraft it ourselves, it'd be really cool to work together to create like a 30,000 point diorama. Or if we're really crazy, even bigger than that, like the 60,000 point of the two battle groups or even of the 300,000 point. Can you imagine a 300,000 point diorama? I don't even know how we would coordinate that, but it would be crazy. And I'll totally want to make a series of videos about this over the next year. Tyranids have always been my passion. We could talk all day about whether Warhammer 40k is fun or not. And I find that in every edition we have the same discussion. And it always comes down to I find I have the most fun pretty much in any game. But especially in 40k when I say I don't care about the meta. I don't care about match play. I don't care about organized play. I'm just going to do fun stuff. Like Luke and I just played a game. It's not up yet where, and I've done this before, where we roll battle scars and we choose three of our most important units and we kind of decide uh, what's the most important units and we roll battle scars for them. And if you don't know what a battle scar is, if you play the narrative crusade, which is supposed to be like you play a bunch of games and your guys level up, um, battle scars are when your units die, you roll a die and they possibly get a battle scar. So it could be something like um, you're not allowed to advance or you get no charge bonuses or, you know, critical hits, that kind of stuff. And so it's supposed to nerf your guys. And you might think, well, why would I want to do that? Or maybe you get it right away. And the, the, the answer is because you play this one game and you immediately feel like you've been playing for 20 games because there's a story like, why is my guy this way? Oh, they're out of ammo. That's why. Why is my guy minus one toughness? It's because, well, he was beaten up in the last one, but he survived. Why are my guys dishonored and can't use stratagems? It's like, well, because last time they didn't complete their goal. And so now this game, I'm going to have them just go out there and pedal to the metal, just try to make up for that 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 horribleness that they did not achieve. Um, and it just, it adds so much. I remember the first time I did this, we actually rolled up upgrades too, but we didn't care about the upgrades. It was the battle scars that made all of the difference. Upgrades are fun, but your guys already have a million rules. 
So adding a, just like a battle scar where it's just like, yeah, and they can't do this, and they can't do this, and they can't do this. Um, it just, it makes, all of a sudden, you got to think differently about your unit. Like uh, Luke actually rolled up that one of his, his Death Shroud Terminators have no objective control. So they can't hold objectives. And all of a sudden, it's like, oh, man, that totally changes what they're capable of doing, especially because Death Guard have a rule that if you're holding an objective, you can infect it and then move on and so these guys can't do that and it's just that just is like oh all of a sudden i just have to surround them and i can grab an objective and um and he's got to think differently about how he's going to use them and so it's just it's just so much fun and the grand narrative does use crusades so you have the same kind of idea of your guys upgrading your guys getting battle scars and it's just so much fun so you know we can if you want to have fun in any game i can guarantee you that if you add a narrative element to it especially if you add negative things to what is going on then you will have that fun you will just find it so much fun nothing against tournaments because at the same time of the grand narrative there's a there's the tournament of the year i can't remember what it's called the grand finale the grand championship or whatever it's way more people in it so obviously a lot of people love tournaments and i like walking around and talking to people in the tournament too at the same time like between games um and they're obviously having fun uh, some of them like some of them aren't obviously because if they're losing really poorly, then that can that can stop you from having fun, and I get it. Um, and they're all in there just having a blast. And so tournaments are great too. I just it's just not something I care about. I don't care about trying to keep up on the meta because it's just constantly changing, especially with the rapid releases that Games Workshop has with all of their games. It just makes it impossible. So I think I've rambled on long enough here. You can hopefully you can tell how excited I am. So if you are interested in joining me in Atlanta, Georgia to go to the Grand Narrative and be part of a glorious high fleet, contact me, matthew at miniwargaming.com or contact me on Discord, MWG as in Mini Wargaming, Matthew as in Matthew, with two Ts. Matthew is spelt with two Ts. Sorry, French guys out there. Matthew in English is spelt with two Ts, except there's a very few exceptions. I've, I've met like one out of a hundred Matthews have one T in their name. Are you a Matthew with one T, but you're not French? Because Mathieu, obviously, is one T, but it's also spelled totally differently. So, uh, but if you're an, if you're just like a normal, not normal, I don't know, European, non-French descent, which is literally impossible because they've been mixing for thousands of years, <laughs> whatever. Do you have Matthew with one T and you're not French, as far as you know? Let me know in the comments below. Anyways, I have rambled on long enough. Join me in Atlanta and uh, details in the description below. Happy work, I mean.